the NASA Space Shuttle was built with the ambitious goals of low cost and rapid reusability. But its Thermal Protection System, TPS, designed to shield the shuttle during re-entry, ultimately held it back. Each flight required intensive inspection and the replacement of thousands of fragile heat tiles, making the process slow and expensive. Today, SpaceX is taking a bold step toward achieving what the shuttle couldn't. By learning from its predecessor's limitations, SpaceX is building a system that's more robust, cost-effective, and truly reusable. So how are they doing it? Find out in today's episode of TechMath. On April 10th, a photo surfaced online showing Starship 36 inside Mega Bay 2 at Starbase, getting ready for its 10th test flight. But what really grabbed attention was the ship's thermal protection system, TPS. It had a patchwork look that suggests SpaceX might be testing new materials or techniques, possibly inspired by or based on TUFROC. Back in 2019, SpaceX teamed up with NASA to license and further develop a technology called TUFROC, short for Toughened Unipiece Fibrous Reinforced Oxidation Resistant Composite. It's a reusable heat shield material originally developed at NASA's Ames Research Center. Built to handle the extreme heat of re-entry, it's a perfect match for Starship's mission to be rapidly reusable. As part of the agreement, NASA shared technical insights with SpaceX, including documents, test data, and even weekly calls with experts. The goal was to help SpaceX improve its TPS, especially for areas like the nose and wing edges that get hit hardest during re-entry. TUFROC stands out for being both heat-resistant and lightweight, ideal for a spacecraft aiming to fly again and again on missions to low Earth orbit, the Moon, and eventually Mars. It's clear SpaceX is taking a page from NASA's playbook, especially the Space Shuttle program, while building its own next-gen TPS. When you compare Starship's TPS to that of the shuttle, the evolution becomes obvious. Looking closely at Starship's tile design, you'll notice similarities to AETB Advanced Environmental Barrier Tiles, which were used during the final years of the Space Shuttle. These tiles have a TUFI, toughened uni piece, fibrous insulation, coating and molybdenum disilicide, just like what seems to be present on Starship. In fact, when Elon Musk talked about the tiles, he mentioned they're made from silicon and aluminum oxide. He also revealed that the newest batch, used starting with Starship's fifth flight, are twice as strong as before. This improvement might come from using thicker alumina fibers, making them tougher even if it adds a bit of weight. The shuttle used tiles with an outer coating made of tetrasilicide and borosilicate glass. Starship tiles share that shiny black look, and during re-entry, you can spot a brilliant blue plasma glow around the vehicle. That's a sign of borosilicate, which burns blue and is known for its low thermal expansion, making it resistant to cracking under extreme heat changes. The shuttle was a marvel of its time, but its TPS had major limitations by today's standards. Its shape was so complex that every one of its 24,000 heat shield tiles had to be custom made. They varied in size and thickness, which made repairs and replacements slow and expensive. The shuttle didn't use one material for everything. It relied on a mix. Reinforced carbon-carbon, RCC, on the nose and wing edges, LI-900 silica tiles, HRSI on the belly, and felt reusable surface insulation. FRSI, in cooler areas. While clever, it created a logistical headache. In contrast, Starship is designed with simplicity in mind. Its panels are mostly uniform in size and shape, with only about 100 custom pieces for tricky spots like the nose. SpaceX adopted a tile-based approach for Starship, but aimed to address the shuttle's shortcomings. Starship's TPS uses hexagonal ceramic tiles which are more uniform in shape and designed to minimize gaps. Unlike the shuttle, 
where tiles were custom-shaped for different parts of the orbiter. Starship's standardized hex tiles simplify manufacturing and installation. Elon Musk has emphasized that these tiles are designed to avoid the need for gap fillers, like the Nomex felt used on the shuttle, which required labor-intensive inspections. Starship's TPS eliminates the lengthy visual inspections that the shuttle needed, around 80,000 labor hours per flight for TPS maintenance alone. This approach streamlines production, allows for automated manufacturing, slashes costs, and improves reliability. This simplicity could also be a lifesaver on Mars missions. If a tile breaks, astronauts could carry spares and quickly swap them out. That kind of repairability could make the difference between a safe return and a mission failure. It's a perfect example of how modern aerospace engineering favors smart simplicity, less complexity, more efficiency. The shuttle's tiles were made from high-purity silica, which offered great thermal protection but were fragile. They cracked easily and needed to be re-waterproofed before each flight to avoid water absorption during launch, which could freeze and cause damage in space. The reinforced carbon-carbon, RCC, on the wing edges was stronger but still vulnerable, as seen in the Columbia disaster in 2003, where a piece of foam struck the RCC during launch and led to the orbiter's loss during re-entry. SpaceX, learning from that, has aimed to make Starship's TPS more resilient. While the full makeup of its tiles isn't publicly known, they're likely made from a ceramic matrix composite, CMC, or a similar advanced material, possibly influenced by NASA's TUFROC. SpaceX licensed TUFROC in 2019, a material known for being tougher and more reusable than the shuttle's silica tiles. It was even used successfully on the X-37B. On top of that, SpaceX chose stainless steel as Starship's base structure. It can withstand more heat than the shuttle's aluminum body, reducing the stress on the tiles. This hybrid design, mixing metal and ceramic, means Starship can take minor tile damage and still survive re-entry, unlike the shuttle. The shuttle mainly relied on passive cooling, where materials absorbed and radiated heat. NASA did look into active cooling systems like transpiration cooling, where a fluid seeps out to absorb heat, but it was never used due to cost and complexity. SpaceX, however, has integrated active cooling into Starship's design. It uses methane, possibly in a transpiration or regenerative cooling system, on the windward side, where heat is most intense during re-entry. Methane can seep out and evaporate, carrying away heat, or circulate through pipes to manage temperature. This significantly reduces the heat stress on tiles and lowers the risk of cracking. While the shuttle didn't use active cooling, NASA's past research laid the groundwork for what SpaceX is doing now, especially as Starship faces hotter re-entries from places like Mars. The shuttle was built to be reusable, but its TPS became a huge bottleneck. Inspecting and replacing individual tiles took time and money, and each one had to be re-waterproofed and recertified for flight. This turned what was supposed to be a quick turnaround into months-long delays, cutting into cost-effectiveness. SpaceX built Starship's TPS from the ground up with fast reuse in mind. Its hexagonal tiles are attached using a pin system, no glue, so they can be swapped out quickly. The shuttle's tiles, on the other hand, were glued on with a strain isolation pad, SIP, making them difficult and time-consuming to remove. Starship also avoids using gap fillers by minimizing gaps between tiles, which means fewer things to inspect or fix. And if some tiles do come off, Starship's stainless steel frame can handle up to 1,400 degrees Celsius, enough to survive re-entry something the shuttle's aluminum couldn't do. Way back in the Apollo days, NASA used ablative heat shields that burned away to carry off heat. The shuttle ditched that for reusability, but it came with all the TPS maintenance headaches. 
Even so, NASA's work on ablative materials provided loads of useful data for future spacecraft. While Starship's main TPS is reusable, SpaceX has considered using ablative coatings as a backup or for early Mars missions, where getting the ship back in one piece might not be a top priority. These ablative shields can handle the intense heat of superorbital re-entries while freeing up room for more cargo by skipping some of the heavy active cooling systems. It's a smart balance, taking lessons from the shuttle era struggles and applying them to real-world mission needs. Another important change is how the tiles are attached. The shuttle used adhesive to stick them on, which, combined with its aluminum structure, couldn't handle extreme heat, so the tiles had to be thick and heavy, adding to the vehicle's mass. Starship does it differently. Tiles are mounted with smooth pins that lock them into the steel body. It's so secure that, under normal conditions, you can't remove a tile without breaking it, an approach that's rugged, efficient, and built for the long haul. One of Starship's most important innovations is its positioning. Unlike the Space Shuttle, which was mounted beside its booster, Starship sits on top of the Super Heavy booster. This layout isn't just visually different, it's safer and more efficient. Mounting Starship on top shields it from intense vibrations and reduces the risk of damage to its thermal protection system during launch. Starship's overall design also gives it a big edge when it comes to surviving the brutal heat of re-entry. Its chunky, cylindrical shape isn't just iconic, it's intentional. That blunt form helps spread out heat and protect the spacecraft as it barrels back through the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. The flat front creates a compression zone where heat builds up rapidly, but it also forms a temperature gradient that cools off further down the ship. This natural buffer acts as an aerodynamic heat shield, offering better thermal protection than the shuttle's sleeker winged shape. When it comes to SpaceX's success principles, it's impossible not to mention the iterative approach, and the company has applied it in the process of refining and testing the thermal protection system. During Flight 4, viewers saw heat shield tiles falling off, dubbed the shooting stars. But SpaceX didn't just brush it off. They responded by improving the design for Flight 5. One major change? They added a layer of ablative material under the tiles. So if any shields fall off, the exposed steel has a backup layer protecting it from temperatures that can hit thousands of degrees. SpaceX also learned from the heat damage seen on the control surfaces during Flight 4. These wing edges are especially vulnerable to thermal loads. But Starship's wings are designed to fold inward and can be rotated to the leeward side, minimizing their exposure to direct heat. Just like NASA before it, SpaceX has taken testing seriously. They use arc jet testing, similar to NASA's methods, to simulate re-entry heat and pressure. Every test flight offers new data, helping to refine the TPS even further. That patchwork look on Starship 36's heat shield? It might be SpaceX experimenting with new materials and techniques, just like NASA did over three decades of the shuttle program but SpaceX's pace is faster. Their rapid prototyping and frequent flights let them improve Starship much quicker than NASA ever could with the shuttle's slower launch schedule. 